Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. We live in a world where our senses are our main interaction with all that which is external to us. We interact with the world around us through our hearing and our seeing and our smelling and our touching. And this creates a world for us. A world of interaction with illusion. And this interaction has a certain effect on us. It causes us either pain or joy or greed or contentment, but it has an effect on us. Um, the Buddhists tell us that this interaction will constantly lead to various sorts of misery because this world is temporary by nature, illusory by nature, and dissipates by nature, falls apart on us. So whatever it is we believe in is fleeting. Now, what happens is that as we spend time in the world and as we grow up in the world, we are under the perception that this world is real. And because the perception is that the world is real and is our reality, we are affected by the outcome of the interaction with things in the world. Furthermore, our mind, which works with the world, sets up expectations and ideas about how things should happen in the world and what should happen in the world and how things should come out in the world. And we move along and we play out these scenarios that the mind establishes for the way things should be and we react to them. If things don't happen the way we think or our mind thinks it should happen, we become sad. Um, if things don't happen the way that we think things should happen, we can become depressed. We can become angry. We can become jealous. We can become lots of negative qualities. Now, what's interesting is we all know about Satan and the satanic qualities. We all know about the qualities that are Allah and the qualities that aren't Allah. But think about your interaction with things and begin to realize that all of the negative qualities come from interactions with the world and our expectations of those interactions and those interactions not going the way we want them or expect them to go. Those things cause us to get into torpors of qualities that are not human, qualities that are animal. So, if somebody says something to us that upsets us, or something, somebody does something to us that hurts us, we resent them. We dislike them. But, think about it. What we're still doing is reacting to worldly 
situations. We're reacting to things that are going on around us in various ways. Now, we have been told and we have understood to an extent that there is more to this existence than what meets the eye. In other words, there's more to existence than what we see. There is an existence beyond what we see. And there is an existence beyond our interaction with the external world. There is an entire internal world that we can and do react with. So, the question is, for each of us that we have to ask ourselves, is which are we more attached to? The external world or the inter world? Are we more attached to the qualities of the illusory nature of the world or are we more attached to the qualities of God, the serene qualities of God? And we can tell by our temperament if we look at ourselves what we're more attached to. If we're constantly upset, if we're angry, if we're resentful, if we're jealous, then that means the illusory world is very, very important to us. Much more important than the internal world that doesn't interact with these things. So, what has to be done in order to change our interaction and our emotional response to the outside world. How do we go about bringing about a change in what we perceive as important? In other words, what do we prioritize in our life? Is it very important how other people feel about us? Is it very important as to our status in this illusory world? Is it very important about the respect that we get in this world? And if it is, then we are going to suffer all of the difficulties that come with not getting those things to happen. But, if we are capable of turning away from the world and getting to the point where our interaction with the world doesn't affect us on an emotional basis, on a cellular basis, on a real basis, then we are able to switch from being constantly within the world to spending time with the unseen. Now, to spend time with what is not seen, we have to set the intention to do that because our normal uh, positioning when our eyes are open is that we see the world and we react to the world. And if we don't react to it, it kind of makes us react to it. Things happen in front of us that we almost have to get involved with. So, how do we pull ourselves back? And how do we stop uh, this interaction uh, that is so difficult, that causes us such difficulty with the world? There are different recommendations by different holy men as to how to do this. The Buddha said you had to go homeless and give up 
all of your connections to the world. And in giving up all your connections to the world, you could bypass the tribulations of the world. But if you listen closely to his discourses, you'll find that even the homeless have worldly problems. Like, am I going to get alms today that are appropriate for my meal? Is my food as good as the food that the other monks got? Uh, when I go into a town, am I given the uh, right amount of respect? Do they ask me to speak or do they ask others to speak? So even when you get down to having nothing and you're at the essentials of things, the problems that the world gives still come, they just come in different ways. So even the homeless whose attitude is that we have given up the world still take with them the problems of the world unless they don't. Now, we need to be conscious of that. And we need to be conscious that it takes effort to give up our attachments to the world. And it takes effort not to care about how the world reacts to us. It takes real effort. If we know what's right, and we do what's right, who's our judge? Allah is our judge. But if we let man judge us, and if we are susceptible to that judgment in various ways, like resentment, hatred, anger, then we are letting illusion run our existence. And we have to learn how to stop letting illusion run our existence and find the place of reality. Haq is the name, is a name of Allah, and it means reality. It means reality in the sense that it is God's reality, the reality that exists outside, God bless you, outside the nature of this illusory world. And <clears throat> our work has to be to get to that place. Our work has to be to find a path to that place. Because if we don't, we are going to be susceptible to the slings and arrows and vagaries of this illusory world. And we will be constantly in an action and reaction situation. Something happens, we do something. Somebody else does something to that, we do something to that. If you read the history of the world, that is the history of the world. Wars back and forth and back and forth and people in charge and people losing domain and people coming into prominence and then losing prominence, uh, being, being important and then being not important, going up and down. The world is on a roller coaster. And if we go back through history, you will note that different areas of the world were the most powerful at different times. Um, right now, we wouldn't consider Mongolia a very powerful part of the world. However, there was a time that from the steppes of Mongolia came the people who were most feared in all of civilization. And why were they the most feared? Because of horses and a new knife that was better than everybody else's knife. How do we escape from the vagaries of this world? How do we escape from the attachment to this world? And the simple reason, or the, the, simple, the simple answer, is to not to be involved in the machinations that the world brings about. If someone, and I've been in this situation, 
I've been in a situation where people began um, to lose their control and throw various animosity at me. I was able to walk away and left them with their animosity, uh, with nobody to scream at. Can we do that? Can we walk away from that kind of animosity? And can we walk away without letting it affect us? Now, some people, when you walk away from them, will be smart enough to realize what's going on. Some will look at you as weak. Some who are watching will look at you as following the dictates of what you've been taught. But none of that matters because it's not what the world thinks of you. In the end, there's only one judge. And one of the things that is so prevalent in this world is everybody thinks they should judge everybody else. And everybody has opinions about everybody else. But we all know that judgment has been left to Allah alone. And when we enter into judgment, we are usurping Allah's powers and what Allah has left for himself. And we can't do that. And there are going to be consequences for doing that. But we have to realize that there are going to, have, that there are going to be consequences for doing that. And we have to be able to let go of that need that the mind has to criticize everything, explain everything, and judge everything. And it isn't going to stop. So somehow we need to be able to go through our life without a constant reaction to what goes on in the mind. Now, the sheikhs say, you have to cross over the ocean of illusion. And you have to get to the shore on the other side. And what's that really mean? It means you have to cross over the mind and the influence of the mind and the places where the mind takes you and the difficulties that the mind causes you and the qualities that the mind brings into your being. You have to cross over them to get to the place of serenity. Allah has serenity. He doesn't have anger. Allah has peace. He doesn't have jealousy. Allah has tranquility. He doesn't have resentment. He's crossed over all of these things. None of them have any meaning to him or have any bearing on him because he has found the place of truth and the place of repose. Now, can we find that place? Can we find that core center within us that is attached to truth and is attached to our Lord? Or are we going to continue to chase the world in the way the mind directs us. We have to have a new director. The mind can't be our guide. The mind can't be our director. And that's why you need an external sheikh to replace your mind. You need an external sheikh to take you in the appropriate directions. And and this is the hard one. You have to listen to him over your mind. You have to listen to him and not your mind. And what I've seen so often is the mind constantly creeps in and begins to deny the sheikh and begins to deny the truth of the sheikh and begins to deny the words of the sheikh and begins to deny the rules of the sheikh. The sheikh will give you rules that are black and white. He'll say, don't talk about your brothers and sisters. 
don't, um, don't expose their difficulties. Don't shame them. But the mind will say, they shamed you, you should shame them. They exposed you, you should expose them. Even if they didn't, they may expose you, so expose them before they expose you. All of a sudden, the rules of the sheikh become secondary to the positioning in the world. And when that happens, those people become what the Quran calls the imposters, the hypocrites, the ones who make believe they are following the path, but in truth are following the world. And so who are they imposters to? They're not just imposters to everyone around them and everyone they know, they're imposters to themselves because they have made rules up for themselves that they think are appropriate and yet they are entirely contrary to the truth. So they live in a world of lies that they've created for themselves and hold on to in order, in their minds, to protect themselves. And the important word there was, in their minds. You see, most of the world thinks they are their mind. And as long as they believe they are their mind and that their thoughts are who they are, they are going to be attached to the way of the world because that's what the mind is attached to. The mind is elemental and incapable of seeing beyond that which is elemental. So as long as you stay within your mind and the thoughts within your mind, <clears throat> you are going to stay within the misery that the world has to offer. But it's only when you decide and you make an effort to escape from your mind that you realize that your mind is holding you in place and not letting you move into another realm. You see, as long as you're in the world, you may be wealthy, you may be poor, you may be powerful, you may be without power, but in whatever position you're in, you're still subject to what the world has to give. And what the world has to give is destruction. And no matter what your position is in the world, you will be destroyed. It's just a matter of time. However, the world doesn't allow you to see the truth of your own existence. Um, there's a story of a powerful king who was very arrogant and his fortune tellers told him that he was going to die within three days. So he got uh, some of his people uh, to take him to a mountain, the highest mountain in the kingdom. And there was a cave in this mountain. And there was a stone blocking this cave. And he had the stone open up and he went into the cave so that he would hide himself from death. And at, within minutes of when he was supposed to die, he finally got there and the cave was closed. And uh, as he turns around, the angel of death is there. And he says to him, I wondered why God sent me here to get you. I couldn't imagine finding anyone in this cave. Well, whatever the world tells you and whatever you think is subject to God's will and subject to what God wants to happen. We need to give up our ideas of the world and we need to refocus on our ideas of mercy and compassion and peace and if we can do that we can transcend. Mercy is an entire world unto itself. 
Peace is an entire world unto itself. We need to get to know these worlds. The Kaaba represents God's house. And it is an obligation of Muslims to visit this house once in their lifetime. And what they do is to prepare for the visit, they reconcile all of their worldly situations, and they dress in a death shroud and go to this place. For men, it's a towel, two towels, one wrapped around their lower body and one wrapped over their upper body. And for women, it's a white ubaya or a white dress. So you go to uh, the Kaaba as if you were preparing for your funeral. And what is the symbolism of that? Because everybody doesn't die after Hajj, they go back home. The point is that you die to the world and you are reborn with your Lord. But to be reborn with your Lord, you have to die to the world. You can't be reborn into God's qualities without giving up the qualities of the world. You can't have both. You can't be angry and merciful. You can't be angry and compassionate. You can't be angry and peaceful. And when you realize that it's the anger or the hatred or the resentment or the jealousy that's stopping you from being peaceful or compassionate or merciful, you begin to realize that a choice has to be made. I have to give up one to get the other. And if I can't give it up, I can't get it. So if you want to go to the place of repose, if you want to go to the Kaaba that exists for you, wherever you are, it can happen when you've given up your attachment to the world. And when you've given up whatever it is that you think does positive things for you in the world. For instance, some people believe hatred and hating other people somehow helps them. Some people feel resentment somehow helps them. None of these things are true. They're all negative qualities that are like carrying acid inside your being that are burning up your soul. So we need to begin to loosen our ties to the world. We be need to begin to loosen our attachment to the world. We need to loosen our connection to the world. And we need to bind ourselves to Rahman and Rahim. We need to bind ourselves to compassion and mercy and to God's truth. This is the path and this is how change occurs. And if this change can occur for us, we can transcend the difficulties in this world. Then no matter what our position is in this world, we can still be kind. No matter what our status is in this world, we can still be merciful to those that we see. It doesn't take status to be merciful. It doesn't take money to be merciful. It doesn't take honorifics to be merciful. It doesn't take medals on your chest to be merciful. It takes the intention to be merciful. It's available to everybody. And it can't be bought. It can only be gotten through an intention to find our way with our Lord. 
may Allah help us all in this endeavor and bring us to the place where we understand his qualities and are capable of incorporating his qualities into our being so that our being truly disappears and his being is the only being that exists. La ilaha illallah. I do not exist. Only God exists. God is the supreme. All praise is to him alone. And may it be that we know him and he knows us. Amin, amin, ya rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.